Linear accelerator are the most commonly used device for delivering radiotherapy. I am here to brief you about the physics part of it. The foundation of radiation oncology is based upon the interaction of radiation with cell. Linear accelerator is a kind of device which delivers radiation from the uh, outside the patient. So what is a linear accelerator? You may wonder by seeing the fish cell, what is the relation between surf rider and a LINAC? There is some physics behind this. Here the surf rider will be moving in a sinusoidal pathway like this. His aim is to gain more speed. He gains more speed when he reaches the top of the wave. The amount of speed gained by him it depends upon the speed of the wave or height of the wave. So by definition, a linear accelerator is a device that uses high frequency microwave to accelerate charged particles such as electrons to high energies in a linear path. The frequency of microwave used in LINAC ranges in 3000 Hz. So this accelerator electron itself can be used to treat superficial tumors. When this accelerator electron is allowed to bombard a high heavy metal target, it emits high energy X-ray photons, which is used to treat tumors which are deep seated. The idea of, uh, idea of accelerating electron particle is actually demonstrated by Rolf Federer, who is a Norwegian accelerator physicist. Today's Mexican medical accelerator is simply an extended version of this idea. So after several struggle, the first linear was developed and installed in the UK, Hammersmith University Hospital in 1952. They treated their first patient in 1953. The first linear in the US was installed in Stanford Hospital in 1956. So in India, the first linear is installed in Cancer and in 1976. This is the picture of the first linear installed in uh, Stanford Hospital. The, the boy is the first patient who got treated by this linear. He was treated for uh, retinoblastoma. His vision was preserved and his uh, cancer was completely cured and he lived the rest of his life with clear vision. These initial LINAC were very bulky in size. Uh, it was difficult to move this LINAC around the patient and treat different parts of the body. So after several generations of LINAC, this is a picture of a modern LINAC with more advancements. There is a tree pod couch where the patient lies. There is a collimator in which there are several components are there to deliver the radiation beam highly conformal to the tumor. There is an X-ray tube and imaging director. This X-ray tube will emit cone beam X-rays, which is used to create cone beam CT of the patient. This is a typical block diagram of a linear accelerator. There is a power supply which supplies DC power to the modulator. Magnetron or electron are the device which emits microwave radiation. Electron gun is the source of electrons here. This is the accelerator tube where the electron gets accelerator, accelerated. This tube is looks like linear in structure. That is how the name linear stress came. So after getting accelerated by this wave gate, the electron will reach the treatment head where several components are there. The waveguide is actually a tube-like structure made up of copper. This uh, tube-like structure is separated by several disc, copper disc, and there is a hole in the center which allows the passage of the electron particles through the waveguide. The input microwave actually propagates in this way into the waveguide. Here the electron particle is accelerated by the sinusoidal component of this microwave which is analogous to the acceleration process of a surf rider. I have a video demonstration to make you understand better. This is the same linear what we have in our department. So this is a magnetron which injects microwave radiation into the wave gate. This injection of microwave is synchronized with the injection of electron from this electron gun. This is the waveguide structure where the electron gets accelerated. After getting enough acceleration, it reaches the treatment head part where 
it that is allowed to hit a target to produce high energy x-rays. The input frequency and power of the magnetron microwave is adjusted to vary the output x-ray beam energy. So many LENAC use a triodide electron gun which has a tungsten filament inside that. When this filament is heated, electrons emitted from that. The number of electrons emitted from the filament is adjusted by varying the heat of the filament. So inside this pave gate, the electron is accelerated by the electric component of the microwave. In order to cut down the energy loss by electrons, this entire waveguide is maximized so that the electron will not be emitted by any other particle. The electron may get deflected in its pathway because of the magnetic component of microwave. These focusing coils helps the electron to keep in the center of the waveguide so that it continuously gain acceleration. The steel pile focus that and keep that in the center of the wave gate to keep gain acceleration which is equal to speed of light. The entire wave gate is produce more produce more heat. So to cut down the heat, water cooling system is used. This is the treatment head part, it contains several components. There is a flight tube which is inside the treatment head. This flight tube does two things. One, it will drive the electron towards the target. Another thing, it will focus the electron time, uh, the electron beam equivalent to the pin, uh, step of a pin point. This electron then allowed to hit a heavy metal target and X-ray for heavy energy X-ray photons are produced in radial direction. Only forward head scattering, high energy excellence are allowed to treat the patient. So initially it is a conical shaped beam. When it comes out of the treatment head, it, uh, the maximum uh, field size is 40 by 40 rectangular field. So metal field collimator is the most important component in the treatment head. It not only shapes the beam, according to the tumor, but also seals the critical organs. So these multi-leaf collimators continuously moves according to the tumor shape. The shape of the multi-leaf collimator changes continuously with respect to the gantry movement, depending upon the projection of target. So all these different components are controlled by a computer system in the LINAC. So till 1970, telecobot medicine machine was mostly used for delivering radiation therapy. Later, linear accelerator replaced its usage because of several advantages. Uh, by difference, uh, linear accelerator uses uh, the radiation source in the linear accelerator is an X-ray or electron. Whereas in telecobal machine, it is a radioactive isotope cobalt 60 which emits gamma rays. <coughs> so, linear accelerator artificially generate radiation. We have an option of multiple X ray photons and multiple energies of X rays and electrons. But cobalt 60 is a natural radioactive isotope, it has only single energy. The dose rate of a linear accelerator ranges between 0 to 2400, it can be varied. Higher the dose rate, lesser the treatment time will be there. The maximum dose rate for radio to a telecobalt machine is 200 when the activity is high. And this dose rate will be coming down as the cobalt 60 is a naturally radioactive isotope. It will decay when the, uh, it reaches the time goes. So the dose rate will be reducing with respect to time. There is no source changes required for LINAC. For telecobalt, the radiative isotope has to, be, has to be changed in every 7 years when the activity is below. 
using linear accelerator, we can deliver different kind of techniques. With telecobalt, we can deliver only 2D conventional radiotherapy. Since later produce radiation artificially, when the machine is soft, there won't be any radiation. But since it is a radioactive isotope, there is a small amount of radiation even though the source is in sealed condition. Modern linear assertors are highly complex. Radiation dose won't deliver to the patient cannot be taken back. So we need to be pretty sure whether the machine is working properly and accurately before delivering treatment to the patient. Whenever a LINAC is installed, it undergoes two-stage process. In the first stage, acceptance testing occurs in which several kind of tests being conducted to ensure the correctness of the accuracy of the LINAC. In the second stage, commissioning occurs where the LINAC beam characteristic and beam profile scans will be taken using a radiation field analyzer and ionization chamber. This information acts as a baseline. This information along with the machine's geometrical parameter will be fed into the treatment planning system which is used to predict the radiation dose into the patient. So this baseline value has to be considered continuously monitored whether it remains in the same or it is changing. So QA program is mandatory for that. <coughs> WPM records uh, recommends different protocols for doing those QA programs. There are a number of QA programs performed on daily, weekly and monthly basis by the medical physicist. So in the THM, a linear accelerator customizes high energy exercise to confirm to a tumor safe and destroy cancer cells while sparing the surrounding normal tissue. It offers multiple electron and X-ray photon energies which could be chosen as per requirement. It features several built-in safety measures to ensure that it will not deliver a higher dose than prescribed. The periodic QA program is designed to maintain the LINAC within acceptable limits performance standards. Thank you.